Welcome to Transcend Awards. Prioritize policy duties. Duties associated with safety management. By law, the employer in any business must take all reasonable steps to ensure that their employees and other visitors are not exposed to risks to their health and safety. This applies to activities on or off business premises. The employer is accountable for the health and safety management in their business. Employers have duties under health and safety law to assess risks in the workplace. Risk assessments should be carried out that address all risks that might cause harm in the workplace. Duties associated with safety management. Employers should appoint a competent person as their HSE representative. A competent person is someone who is able to give sensible guidance about managing the health and safety risks in the workplace based on knowledge, skills, experience. The knowledge, skills and experience must include sound understanding of health, safety and risk assessment practices in addition to an innate knowledge of the office or contact centre environments and all risk scenarios specific to the organisation, its infrastructure, stakeholders and activities. The employer and senior management team are often selected to oversee health, safety and risk assessment, although an external source can be subcontracted to do this. This is usually done on a site-by-site -site basis. Employers must consult employees on health and safety issues. Consultation must be either direct or through a safety representative that is either elected by the workforce or appointed by a trade union. Duties associated with safety policy. All employers are required to have a health and safety policy in place. A health and safety policy is usually presented in three parts. Statement of general policy. This sets out your commitment to managing health and safety effectively and what you want to achieve. Organisation section. This sets out who is responsible for specific actions. Arrangement section. This contains the detail of what you are going to do in practice to achieve the aims set out in your statement of health and safety policy. The arrangement section should say how you will meet the commitments you have made in your statement of health and safety policy. Include information on how you are going to eliminate or reduce the risks of hazards in your workplace. duties associated with health and safety approaches. To ensure legal compliance and also to reassure the HSE of the commitment to health and safety, the following areas are likely to be embedded into the policy as a minimum. Arrangements for office managers associated with health and safety. Arrangements for the regular organisational risk assessment process across the infrastructure and all routine activities. Arrangements for consulting with and involving employees on risk and safety operating procedures. Arrangements for emergency operating procedures and contingency plans. Arrangements for recording and reporting accidents to staff, customers, visitors and contractors referencing RIDOR processes. Arrangements for health and safety performance monitoring and reporting on the effectiveness of the approach. Duties associated with health and safety approaches. To ensure legal compliance and also to reassure the HSE of the commitment to health and safety, the following areas are likely to be embedded into the policy as a minimum. Arrangements for first aid and occupational health services. Arrangements for periodic site inspections, which would indicate a whole site review during a time of major change and pandemic. Where employers share workplaces,
whether on a temporary or permanent basis, they need to cooperate with each other to comply with their respective health and safety obligations. Arrangements for health and safety induction training and monitoring including ability to assess risk. Arrangements on the approach to accidents and incident investigation to understand causes. A hazard is something on your site that could cause harm to people such as chemicals, electricity and working at height. A risk is the chance, however large or small, that a hazard could cause harm. So how is infectious disease managed? Duties associated with policy for infectious disease. HSE operates and enforces legislation in Great Britain that aims to control the risks to human health from microorganisms people may be exposed to at work. The principal legislation that applies is the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations 2002, known as COSH. These regulations cover hazardous substances including biological agents or pathogenic microorganisms and they contain a schedule of special provisions relating to biological agents. COSH, together with the associated approved codes of practice, require employers to assess the risks of exposure to biological agents, microorganisms, and either prevent exposure where reasonably practicable or control it adequately. Infection control management within an office or contact centre environment needs to be part of the employer's overall aim of ensuring that they provide a safe working environment for personnel and others affected by the work undertaken. The safe operating procedures will refer to the methods in place to prevent the spread of infectious disease, mitigate the effects of infectious disease outbreaks. This will include clear procedures for hygiene and exclusion rules in accordance with HSE guidance. Duties associated with policy for infectious disease. The health and safety policy will outline the approach to emergency operating procedures. This will include contingencies in the event of a crucial incident or catastrophe. The HSE confirm that the health and safety emergency procedures employers in the office and contact centre environment should consider include serious injury to an employee, customer, visitor or contractor, significant damage to the office or contact centre, for example due to a fire, criminal activity, for example a bomb threat, significant event such as a chemical spill or flood, electrocution while in the office or contact centre, public health incidents, for example, an infectious disease pandemic. As you can see, infectious disease is embedded into emergency operating procedures. Duties associated with infection control. The starting point with infection control is developing an infection control policy. The policy must be based on work activities in the work environment, taking into account personnel and others within the environment. Infections at work are those created by exposure to harmful microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, viruses, internal parasites and other infection proteins known as prions. These are called biological agents in legislation. You may be harmed by being infected with the microorganism, by being exposed to toxins produced by the microorganism, by having an allergic reaction to the microorganism or substances it produces. Like the rest of the world, nothing could have prepared business for the impact of the recent coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic which has brought countries around the world to a standstill. As a result, every business's health and safety policy has had to be subject to review and every office or contact centre site 
has also had to conduct a full organisational risk assessment into how the virus impacts all employees, visitors, customers and contractors. Duties of the employer in infection control The infection control policy must be realistic and practical to ensure its suitable implementation in the work setting. It should be clear and structured. It should not be vague and open to interpretation through differing opinions so that the personnel know what is expected of them in ensuring that it is implemented. The policy should include a requirement that the office-based business assess infection control risks for each site through developing and recording an infection control risk assessment. It may be a case of a local outbreak of vomiting and diarrhoea spreading or an epidemic or pandemic outbreak at international level that may potentially have an impact at local level. The infection control policy needs to be live and reviewed where necessary as changes occur through new imported risk challenges within the workplace. Imported risk can range from personnel or other visitors such as contractors coming into the workplace with an infectious disease. Duties associated with policy for infectious disease. The reporting of emergencies in offices or contact centres is covered through HSE by RIDDLE. The reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrences regulations 2013. RIDDLE puts duties on employers, the self-employed and people in control of work premises, the responsible person, to report certain serious workplace accidents, occupational diseases and specified dangerous occurrences or near misses. Guidance for COVID-19 as an example of an infectious disease states, you should only make a report under RIDDLE when one of the following circumstances applies. An accident or incident at work has or could have led to the release or escape of coronavirus. This must be reported as a dangerous occurrence. A person at work has been diagnosed as having COVID-19 attributed to an occupational exposure to coronavirus. This must be reported as a case of disease. A worker dies as a result of occupational exposure to coronavirus. This must be reported as a work-related death due to exposure to a biological agent. Duties of the site management team. The actions of leaders, line managers and supervisors are all important in delivering effective control of health and safety risks. Organisations will decide their own approach to supervision. Whatever method of supervision is used, the role of a supervisor or team leader is important in implementing effective controls. Because of the regular contact they have with workers, they can make an important contribution to making sure everyone knows how to work safely and without risk to their health. All workers follow the organisation's rules. A supervisor can coach, help or guide workers to become and remain competent in these areas as well as others. Your voice and knowledge is essential to the safety of the workforce. Key actions in supervising for health and safety effectively. The key actions for organisations in delivering effective control of health and safety risks should include but is not limited to organise effective worker consultation and involvement, leaders, line managers and supervisors, define supervisors' roles and responsibilities and make sure they are trained and competent in carrying out their role, recognising the importance of supervision as a part of risk control. Make sure the supervisor or team leader has sufficient resources to deal with health and safety issues as part of getting the job done. 
key actions in supervising for health and safety effectively. Managers. Consider the level of supervision necessary for each task according to its complexity and level of risk. Recognize that differing levels of supervision may be needed at certain times, for example, during shift changeover or where there are young or inexperienced workers. Include supervisors in assessing risks and managing the effects of any changes. Encourage supervisors and line managers to have a positive attitude to health and safety. They should lead by example and encourage safe systems of work. Make sure supervisors understand the job so they can make effective, safe decisions. This includes checking that they understand what is expected of them, especially during an emergency. Confirm that supervisors have planned the work and allocated sufficient resources to allow tasks to be completed safely and without risks to health. Make sure that a good example is being set for the workers and that supervisors enforce the rules. If more than one supervisor or line manager is involved in a process, make sure that communication, coordination and cooperation take place. Thank you for watching. Feel free to watch as many times as you need or move on to the next part of your digital learning experience on your list.